Shalom and welcome to Voice of Judea Television. This week, we're starting our show here at the barn in Kvartapur. This is the barn that used to house hundreds of goats and sheep. Last night, for the second time this year, Arabs invaded, penetrated into Kvartapur. Arabs from that village behind us of Kfar Yasuf. You can see the houses in the distance. The Arabs came across that valley into this area here and stole the uh, sheep uh, belonging to the Herzlach family. And uh, this was the second time in, in the last year that this happened. This is a sign that Arabs are uh, able and capable of penetrating and invading into Tepoch. And God forbid uh, this could have been people being murdered. This is why it is so important that our dog program be reinstated in Kfar Tepuach because for the last year and a half uh, our uh, patrols have been uh, stopped in Kfar Tepuach by some small-minded people in the village that did not appreciate the significance and the importance of guarding and deterrence with these specially trained attack dogs. Later in the show, we're going to show you some of the training with these dogs and why these dogs can be so effective in tracking terrorists and in preventing penetrations into settlements. This time they only took goats. Not that I'm underrating the significance to the livelihood of, of, the, uh, of the people who own these goats and sheep and horses that were stolen. Thank God some of them were retrieved, but most of the flock remains in the hands of these Arab thieves. God forbid next time it could be terrorists, but we'll be there with God's help to stop them and to tear them into pieces next time. So let's move on with the show, and we'll talk to you about a very exciting day that we've had today because we really have had an interesting day today, starting with searching for the Arab thieves and terrorists that snuck into Tepuach and, to, and stole these, uh, these animals. So we're going to move on with the show, and we're going to speak to you about current events in Israel, important events going on, but we're also going to speak to you about interesting events that have happened in our lives here today. So let's move on to the rest of the show. You can see how close it is from the Arab village to the to the uh, village, the Jewish village of Fartapuch, and how close it is here to this barn. They just as easily could have, God forbid, attacked the houses here in western Tapuach. We're going to be there tonight. We're going to. We've already been invited back in by the mayor of Tapuach, who has admitted that he made a horrible mistake in requesting that the uh, canine unit no longer patrol in Tapuach. He's requested that we return today and reinstate our patrols, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. And we're going to beef up uh, security around Tepuach and other Jewish towns to prevent Arabs from stealing Jewish property and, God forbid, from killing innocent Jews. You're about to see some footage. In the next few minutes, you're going to be watching footage, real, live, exclusive footage, of the response team from Kfar Tepuach with the help of our canine unit and our canines that went searching for the goats and for the sheep in the nearby Arab village of Yasuf and Itzkaka and uh, with, they were able to retrieve part of the flock and uh, donkeys and uh, a horse that was stolen here from the barn uh, but unfortunately most of the flock is still at large God willing we can get retrieved uh, the whole flock and uh, stay tuned for this very interesting footage in the Arab village, area B. I think it's called area B, or is it A, or is it C? An Arab occupied village near Tepuach, where the search happened earlier this morning. I'm going to go to the 
Here we are back on the Voice of Judea. We decided to broadcast today from the field, not far from where the goats uh, were stolen earlier today in Kfar Tepuach. You can hear one of our guard dogs uh, barking in the background. That's a beautiful plot hound. If you want to zoom in on the dog. A beautiful pedigree plot hound imported from the United States, from North Carolina, to do uh, guard duty here in Israel. I'd like to speak to you about some current events uh, in Israel. I don't have my notes in front of me, and we're not talking from our professional studio in Yerushalayim. This week we're broadcasting live from Kfar Tepuach. News in Israel this week. Shimon Peres. He's back in business. He's 84 years old. I mean, this guy just never dies. This loser, he won this time. He's now the president of Israel. The majority of Knesset members voted for him to be president because the way the presidency works in Israel is the uh, Knesset members vote for him. Obviously, if it would have been a popular vote in Israel, the guy wouldn't have gotten more than 10% of the electorate, but it was the corrupt Knesset members and their wheeling, dealing, combinot, as they say in Hebrew, that brought Shimon Peres back into the limelight, back in business, this uh, prestigious honorary position of president is now in the hands of this traitor, the same Shimon Peres that was responsible, the primary architect of the Oslo Agreement that brought a hundred thousand rifles, assault rifles, into the hands of our most bitter enemies, rifles that have been turned against Jews throughout Israel in terrorist attacks. This man, this criminal, this traitor is now the president of Israel. He's 84 years old. I mean, uh, it, let's hope that he doesn't live out his presidency. Uh, but in the meantime, this man represents, he is the symbol, however tragic that may sound, of the state of Israel today. And so Shimon Peres is president, and Ehud Barak won the primaries in the Labor Party. In all likelihood, he'll be up against Bibi Netanyahu in the upcoming elections. And from the... the from the way things look in Israel, it's very possible that elections will be very, very, very soon. Um, certainly within the next uh, a few months, within the next year, we will see a new prime minister in Israel. In all likelihood, it will not be Ehud Olmert. The, the race will probably be between Ehud Barak of Labor and Bibi Netanyahu of the Likud party. As we know, Barak was Bibi's commander. When Bibi was in the army... Barak was his commander in the elite Sayyar Matkal unit. Last time Bibi went up against Barak, we all know the results. Barak beat Bibi. And everybody's uh, waiting to see what will happen in the next elections. So much for Manhigud Yehudit's plans of Likud returning to power. Right now there's a serious, serious con contender in the race against Bibi. And that may push Likud out of power for another four years. Who knows how long. Barak, is com he's coming, he's charging forward, he has a lot of money behind him, and he has uh, an incredible, in incredible track record. Out of nowhere, he has come again, and he uh, claims that he's going he's gonna to take the next uh, prime minister race from Bibi Netanyahu once again. We'll see. I think it's uh, definitely a fair possibility. Uh, Barak, I mean, when you think about it, this whole upset in the Labor Party and in Israeli politics comes primarily because of what's believed to have been the failure in Lebanon last summer, when Israel fought against the Hezbollah and was not successful in destroying the Hezbollah. And as we know, the Hezbollah is regrouping under the telescope of the United Nations troops there who could not give a damn if Israel is threatened and if Jews will be killed. When will the Jews learn? I mean, this whole ceasefire agreement that brought... United Nations and foreign troops, led by the French, no less, the French Jew-hater anti-Semites, they are leading the troops in Lebanon. The Hezbollah are building their fortifications, bringing in missiles that can reach even further and deeper into Israel. And who was responsible for that debacle? I mean, with all due respect, Ayyad Umar, the zero, the minus, the loser, that is presently the Prime Minister of Israel, I mean, we'd like to give him credit for the failure, but the fact is the failure 
dates back far before before Omar came to be the Prime Minister of Israel and far before Peretz, the Defense Minister, uh, another loser, far before he came into his position. It started with Israel running away from Lebanon under the Barak regime, leaving without an agreement, abandoning the area so that the Hezbollah can build the fortifications that they built, the underground infrastructure that they built there. This was all Barak's doing. And now there's an upset in Israeli politics. People are looking for change. And who do they bring to power and labor? The very guy that was responsible for surrendering Lebanon and creating uh, the, uh, the threat to Israel by the Hezbollah in, on Israel's northern border. So things are upside down in Israel in this era before we usher in Mashiach. I mean, Mashiach must be really, really close because the world is upside down and Israel is as confused more confused than ever. Barack is back in power in labor, threatening to be the next prime minister. Perez, the architect of the Oslo Agreement, he's now going to be the president of Israel. I mean, the Qassams are falling on Israel every single day. And speaking about Gaza, we now know Hamas has seized control in Gaza. Well, first off, let's remember something. The, the so-called Palestinians, the majority of them voted for Hamas in the last democratically held elections in Gaza. And so for all those Israelis that would like to believe that the average Arab is moderate and that there's a difference between Fatah and Hamas, well, if there is a difference, then watch out because Hamas is in charge now. And if there is a difference, then let's face it, the majority of Palestinians voted for Hamas in the first place. So right now, Gaza is in control of the Hamas, so much for making agreements with the Fatah and with Arafat, as if anyone believed that those agreements uh, <clears throat> would, be, uh, would be fulfilled by the, uh, by the Arabs. Obviously, the Arabs didn't hold to those agreements for more than 30 seconds. But the fact is, for those fools that believed that there was a difference between the moderates and the fanatics, for those fools that believed that we could make an agreement with the Fatah, Fatah and it would be enforced, and now Israel will be secured, well, what do you say now that the Hamas is in control there? And this is happening in one country after another. It's like, go make peace with Jordan and with Egypt. For the fools that would like to believe that there is such a thing as moderate Arabs and that we can play the moderates against the radicals, what good does it do if two weeks later or two months later or two years later the radical Islamic fundamentalists that you believe are the, are the bad guys seize power? So what value do the agreements have with the so-called moderates in the first place? So these are some of the lessons we can learn from events in Israel uh, this week. And without further ado, I'd like to move on to some of the dog training, because the focus of today's show is not the losers in Israeli politics, is not the corrupt politicians. We speak about that each and every week. I want to talk about and focus, up, focus upon what happened here in Tapuach, the raid and the invasion, the infiltration by Arab terrorists in Tikfar Tapuach, what can be done to prevent such infiltrations in Kfar Tabuach and in other settlements? How things have been reversed in Kfar Tabuach, with the local government now begging the canine unit to come back and patrol Kfar Tabuach. Because when we patrolled Kfar Tabuach, there were no invasions because the dogs were a deterrent to Arab terrorists and because they were able to detect suspicious movement in the field. And you will see from the footage that you are about to see, brief amateur, slightly edited footage of our last uh, training session with our dogs, and you will see the special dogs that we train with that are trained to attack upon command and to search. Because I want you to look at this area here. My friends, if there was an Arab hiding behind those rocks with the most sophisticated lights, with the most sophisticated night vision, with the most sophisticated devices that the IDF and these response teams have, no one would have detected him. And the fact is, none of these uh, sophisticated IDF patrols spotted the Arab thieves and terrorists that invaded Kfar Tepulth last night. But the dogs you hear barking in the background, they have God-gifted senses, being able to smell, see, and hear movement, even from a mile or two away, especially when the wind is in our favor. And these terrorists easily could have been detected had our patrols been patrolling that area last night. Patrols are back in business, so watch out, Arab thieves, and watch out, Arab terrorists, because we're going to rip you into pieces next time you even think of coming to Kvart Tepuach. Stay tuned for the footage. Hey, 
شوم لریسای این الایون و لویشان شوم لریسای این الایون و لویشان شوم لریسای این الایون و لویشان شوم لریسای شوم